Hey everyone, today I'll be covering the first challenge of the damn vulnerable DeFi by the awesome Ticho Bay. Ticho, let me check this. Tincho Abate. I apologize for ruining the pronunciation of your name but uh, you can see him right there. So um, what I'm gonna cover today is just the first challenge. And so let's go ahead and get right into it because that's why everyone's here. So there's a lending pool with a million DVD to DVT tokens in balance offering flash loans for free. If there's only a way to attack and stop the pool from offering flash loans, you start with 100 DVT tokens in balance. So uh, what we need to do here is make sure that this contract uh, this lending contract is unable to function anymore. So let's go ahead and take a look at this contract. So this is under contracts, unstoppable, unstoppable lender. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. We have an interface for an eye receiver. Um, we can have a look. It has a uh, damn vulnerable token, which is an ERC20, uh, which we can see is this damn, uh, not damn valuable NFT. It's a uh, damn valuable token. Um, so this is just a basic ERC20 uh, implementation. Continuing along, we can see uh, there's a function here called deposit tokens. So this is a, meant to act as a way for the contract or users of the contract to deposit tokens into the pool. Um, and so when it when you deposit a token into the pool, it'll transfer it from the message sender to the, t the smart contract with the amount. Uh, and it will update this state variable pool balance uh, so it can track how much the pool has in, in tokens. Moving on to the next function, which is flash loan. So flash loan is basically like a, a way to borrow an unlimited amount of capital without providing any collateral. Um, and the way that it works is basically you can borrow, I don't know, like 10,000 tokens of whatever token value, and you then can do whatever you want with those tokens, but you must return at least that amount of tokens, plus usually a fee, uh, back to the smart contract all within the same transaction. And so the cool thing about it is that if you don't do it, then the transaction reverts, and when it reverts, all it's like nothing ever happened. Um, so a lot of these is trying to exploit that and, and really try and drain all the funds from the smart contract. So let's take a look at this flash loan, how this works. So we request a borrow amount, it needs to be greater than zero, um, and then it calculates what the balance of the pool is by using uh, the balance of function. Um, you may be a bit confused being like, why is the balance of uh, function it's, it's not defined in the damn valuable token, but because it's an ERC-20, it's implemented in that ERC-20 contract. So then it requires that the balance before is greater than or equal to the borrow amount. So, you know, obviously if there's not enough tokens in the pool, it won't be able to do it. And then it asserts that the pool balance, which is uh, uh, maintained in this state variable here when you deposit tokens, is the same as the balance before. So what we've just calculated is the balance. Uh, it then transfers f to the message sender the amount that they've requested, and then it uh, returns a callback function. So it, it calls the function calls the function on the smart contract that called it um, saying that, yep, you've got the money now. Here's the token address that you borrowed and here's how much you borrowed. Um, then once that's done, uh, usually in the smart contract that's requiring the flash loan uh, or asking for the flash loan, it'll then repay it back. And so straight after this, it goes, okay, let's see what the balance is now after they have done all their uh, you know, executions. So it checks the balance of, again, of this address, and it requires that the balance after equals the balance before. So how do we break this? Well, let's have a look at the setup here. Um, so we can see that the pool initially has a million tokens, um, and we have uh, initially 100 tokens. Uh, we go th here, we can see that it's setting up some things. So we get the signers, it deploys the contracts, um, it approves the tokens to be transferred, deposits some tokens, and then transfers it across, and just does some checking here. So within the exploit here, this is where we'll actually put our code. Um, and so if we were to run this now, so we can run this with uh, yarn run unstoppable. We can see that it fails because it actually expected this transaction here to revert because it's trying to execute a flash loan, but we need to basically stop it. So how do we exploit this? This is actually very, very simple. 
So this may look quite complicated. Um, there's also the receiver thing here. So you can see that this is the receive tokens. We don't need to worry about this because it's not part of uh, what we need to, to exploit here. Um, but if you wanted to know, like this is an example contract of how it, a contract would interact with the lending contract. So you'd have the execute flash loan here. And then this is the function that's called once the tokens have been transferred, which is from this line here. So how do we break this? Well, it's essentially down to this line here. Assert pool balance equals balance before. Uh, there's no reason to do this. Like, and tracking state variables both in the contract and in the other contract when you call the balance of. Essentially, all we need to do is find a way to get pool balance and balance to before to be out of sync. If they become out of sync, then this assertion will never be true. Therefore, no one will be ever able to execute a flash loan. So how do we get this out of sync? Well, let's have a look at uh, pool balance. Pool balance is the state variable, as I said before, that is updated every time someone deposits token in deposits token into this lending pool smart contract. And balance before is the calculated value from the, uh, the token contract of this lending pool contracts address. So if we want to uh, get these out of sync, we need a way to change pool balance because that's the only thing that we can have some kind of impact on um, or not change it. So you have a look at deposit tokens here and you can see that this all it does is transfers tokens from the sender to the smart contract and updates this here. However, there's nothing that stops us from actually transferring those tokens outside of this function. What if we just transferred to the smart contract without going through this deposit tokens function? Therefore, pool balance isn't updated, but balance before will be uh, reflect the new address, uh, the new balance. My, uh, the new, yeah, the new balance. And then these will all be out of sync and it will fail. So how do we do this? Quite simple. So all we need to do is firstly, we connect to the attack co token contract as the attacker. So we have this dot token, which is the token contract, which has been deployed by the deployer. Now we want to connect to that contract as the attacker, because if we were connecting as the deployer, then it's pretty much like we own the contract. We want to make sure like we're kind of a, a third party here. And after that, all we want to do is transfer to the token contract uh, or we'll interact with the token contract and transfer to the pool address all our DBT tokens. It could be one, it could be all, it doesn't matter. It just needs to be at least some. And so that way the balance goes up, but the pool balance state variable in the contract doesn't change. So once this happens, the pool balance will not equal the before balance. And when we run this, let's see what happens. We pass, and that's all it is. So you can see that this transaction reverted when it's trying to do a, a flash loan, but it's not working. Uh, that's how you do it. Uh, if you want to see the full write-up and, and my solution in code, you can get that uh, from my GitHub. I'll link that in the description below. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks, and I'll catch you later.